Come fly with me, far beyond the density, gazing down upon the matrix where you are free to see the cage, a place to which you refuse to be bound because your mind, your soul, was always meant to soar with the eagles. Welcome to Beyond the Matrix. Greetings one and all, it's me Patricia Corey coming to you from, look at the background, gorgeous day at last. We've had so much rain here in the Azores. Greetings one and all, it's me Patricia Corey coming to you from, look at the background, gorgeous day at last. We've had so much rain here in the Azores, um, but it's beautiful. Look at my lush green hills. What a gift to be immersed in this nature. And so is wild Sasha, who is somewhere between Wyoming and somewhere else, up a boot. He'll share that with us. And uh, and the wonderful Scott McKay is the first time I've been able to have him on my show. So I want to thank you both for tuning in and coming in to be part of the show. Let me just... My, my pleasure. You. I'm not going to go into great detail to introduce these two wonderful patriots and freedom fighters and new world, new earth, the light bearers, because you know who they are. And we've all been watching you guys on your tour. You seem to have had a break in the tour. I don't know if you're just taking time off for the grand finale. Is that it? I can jump in and say uh, Scott, Scott's leading the tour. Uh -huh. And um, he's the slow down. When he speeds up, I'll speed up. <laughs> Over to you, Scott. I actually, uh, I actually had to jump off the tour for a weekend because I had an event to do in Gettysburg. Um, also, I had to jump off for an event, and so we just we're going to reconvene in Sturgis. I I had to come into Bozeman, Montana, and pick up my rig, and then go get Sasha or go go try to track him down. I think he's on some four thousand acre ranch somewhere shooting. Who knows what? I can't wait to see that. But we're gonna we're gonna reconvene in Sturgis, do some drone footage, and uh, do do on on my bike. We're gonna do uh, two events there on Friday. We're gonna do one. I believe it's at two o'clock. Uh, to 5 30 for the people that are actually on the the buffalo chip grounds and then sunday uh, we're going to do a uh, another type of event might, it might be a speaking and meet and greet or a meet and greet i think it's going to be about 3 p.m on sunday and that's where it'll be for free to all the people that don't need to pay to get on the buffalo chip grounds and just come out and you know hang out with us so we're working on that venue right now so is that the closing event for the tour no. How are you going? On the, you're, you're closing up on the 4th of July, are you? We are going to, no, we are going to, 4th of July is, is we're reconvening for that, that event that weekend. And then we are off to, I believe it's St. Louis, isn't it, Sasha? So with St. Louis, we have a number of, uh, a number of other locations to hit. Uh, so I believe, I believe it's St. Louis. And then from there we go to, I think, Columbus, Ohio, then to oh, Pittsburgh, great. and then Buffalo is on there. I think Buffalo I might miss because I'll be rolling into central Pennsylvania, Penn State, where I'm from, to spend two days there with family. Uh, then we'll go to Louisville, and from there, I think Sasha might know better where we go from there. I can't remember, but we end up, at the end of the day, we we have Sasha Stone until the 24th of July. And, uh, you know, we'll hit Heartbreak Ridge right there because he's going to jump out of the country for <laughs> hopefully only a couple of weeks into Bali and then, uh, then come back. So, uh, he, he owes me, he owes me a grander Ascension experience before he takes off. That's all I can tell you. What are you going to migrate to the U S and leave your paradise in Bali? Uh, well, I, I would, I mean, you know, I love this country more than anything in the world. Um, yeah, but no, I, my, my visa comes up and I've got to get back. There's some, um, work I've got to do in, in Asia. This has been a long holiday for me longest I've ever taken in my life, you know, and I am technically here as a tourist and just traveling and meeting people. I mean, on this ranch with these uh, ranches in Wyoming and learning about the lay of the land here. Um, I came from a farm uh, 10 days ago. I was on another farm, uh, staying with farmers, just uh, just loving connecting with, with the people and um, yeah, connecting to the pulse of, of, of humanity as it's emerging through America, which I, I keep repeating is the most important um, place on earth right now because what happens here dominoes across the rest of the world. And you know, one of the things that's emerging from your work together is this incredible 
realization that despite the gloom and doom that we're hearing about the lethal injection and what it means for anyone who's gotten near it or anyone who's getting near those who have gotten near it, um, you know, you're clearly bringing forward a rallying cry of hope and of light that we are absolutely moving through this bifurcation process and witnessing this split where finally um, we, we, we take out our sabers, we do what we need to do and we move into the light. What would you like to tell us about uh, what you gleaned from this program that you've been on besides meeting extraordinary patriots and wonderful people who have been able to be together and embrace each other without masks and share in this wonderful leadership that you're bringing through? I've learned that um, one um, self-realized or self-actualized good Christian patriot um, is worth 1,000 masked in, in, in goons. Um, and that it, it, it's, you know, that just if, if it is 5% of this country move into their own Christed nature, um, it'll redeem the other 95% in my view, because the quality and the nature of the integrity and of the common humanity and kindness and decency and integrity, probity of the people that I am meeting and mixing with um, is the redemption. That's the antidote to the, to, the, to, the, to the snake bite. And the snake bite is everything that's issued off the back of centuries, many generations of cult programming and of um, indentureship into war and disease and poverty um, and the cycles of harvest, scarcity economics, misery that describes much of the human condition. So I think the antidote that I'm seeing, I mean, a classic case in point is the, the cattle ranches that I'm staying with here. They're not buying any of the bullshit. These people have lived on this soil for 103 years, their family. And um, they, they can see pantomime when it's presented to them. They can see Luciferian agendas when it's coming at them through the Bureau of Land Management or through the Inland Revenue Collection or through the, you know, the, the stealth taxes that are incrementally um, being stepped up and forcing, trying to force good farmers to move against their conscience and go into monoculture, uh, mono farming, monoculturalism and flush all people off the land and pump glyphosates and poisons into the soil and into the rivers and get benefits for doing that. So good people are seeing all of that and stepping away from it. They're having a hard time doing it because they can't then rely on any of the perks or the benefits. You know, but so it's a, it's a, tra it's a, it's a tragic story when, when you look at it from that perspective. But I'm answering your question. What have I learned? I've learned that the common pulse is unbelievably strong, robust, dynamic and will die fighting on its feet it will never bow it will not acquiesce and that's very good to see and to learn yeah because you know after the uh, famous january 6th incident it seemed like the patriots were um, being directed by the team the trump team to bow down and uh, be quiet and not evoke any uh, rebellion which I thought actually would have been a great idea to just get it done. But at any rate, they seem to acquiesce and, and bow down. I'd love to know, well, we'd love to know that that's not the case and that um, the spirit of patriotism and um, freedom fighter, if you will, is stronger than ever in the US. Yeah, well, uh, curiously, the, the, the notion of patriot um, simply applies to good human. You may as well just supplant the word patriot for good human because a patriot is a good human nowadays and a good human is a patriot. And a patriot is somebody who stands by the mystical traditions and the cultural laws, L-O-R-E-S, you know, as opposed to the statutory laws, which are bullshit and dreamt up by technocrats operating on behalf of priest bankers. But the cultural laws 
um, or proclivities and the mystical traditions of a given people in a given part of the world, whether it's Peru or Botswana, means that these are just good humans who, who, can, who can recognize that the satanic element of life is where the priest bankers are given control over our sovereignty and over our children's education and over you know, what happens to our bodies when we die and indeed what happens to our bodies when we're born. So that kind of overreach, central command and control, which is why I call it satanic, because it is satanic. Yeah. Um, so it's about time we started calling that stuff up for what it is, pure and simple. But, but the, the, the sheer commonality and the goodness of people is prevailing. And that's the, that's the message I've got. I've seen firsthand it all across this country. I've been with Scott now for many weeks, two months, um, tens and tens of thousands of people. I've exchanged hugs and love and kisses. I have not had one single negative incident. Not one single negative incident. Not a snide comment, not a stone at the back of my head, not a shitty little, you know, boo from the crowd, nothing. It's all been in the perfection of humans loving and being loved in equal measure. They tell you. And yeah, the status quo would try and tell you that Scott McKay and the Patriot Street Fighters are a, a burgeoning network of domestic terrorists, you know, who are committing treason against them or whatever. Shut up. There's not a farmer in middle America who believes that shit. There's not a grandmother in middle America who believes that shit. They're not going to sell that nonsense. Their BLM bullshit hasn't worked. Their Antifa bullshit witchcraft hasn't worked. They've run out of ideas. Simple yeah. as. We've got Scott back uh, appropriately since you're discussing that. And I just want to say, you know, anybody that would feel that way about Scott McKay hasn't looked into his eyes and felt the energy of this man. I mean, talk about walking your talk. Here's a man who's on stage sharing the light, sharing the power, sharing the love in pain. You, can, you don't have to be psychic to feel his pain you know, switching from one leg to another to try to stand up through it and standing tall in his truth. And, you know, God, how can anybody not be enthralled to be with you guys and to feel that leadership and light and love coming, beaming out? Uh, you know, Patricia, so Patricia, he's not, he's, he's not shuffling from leg to leg through pain. He's a frustrated tap dancer. He always wanted to be in showbiz. <laughs> That's... <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, he that's just outed me. Showbiz, come on! No, it's very inspiring, and you know we love you for it, Scott. And we 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 feel you, and and you know it's it's not that. that look, there's a lot of bullshit out there. We don't have to go into that. And you you know you recognize truth when you see it, and you recognize someone who's walking their talk. And you know, jokes aside, here you guys are out there. How many months? What is it? Two months already, or whatever. Uh, and this trek and this commitment, it's, it's very inspiring. And I know that you are uh, waking up a lot of people and uh, more than just waking up people, I think just giving people leadership, hope, guidance, and uh, to see that people who are talking the talk or walking the talk is, is, is really extraordinary. And I celebrate you so much. Well, I'm honored by that. And uh, I really was bummed out when Sasha had frozen up there because it's always fun to listen to the eloquence. However, whatever he's delivering, whether it's the full throttle truth hammer or he's bringing the ascension sword to the fight, uh, it always is, is magnificent to listen to him. I got to tell you, uh, I second what he said, uh, you know, a couple things about this tour for me, you know, obviously, you know, Patriot Street Fighter is, is quite a movement that has taken me by surprise. But I assure, I assure everybody, this, this doesn't work without Sasha Stone. It doesn't work without Lee Dundas. Um, you know, I planned on doing a Patriot Street Fighter tour. I started talking about it since January. It shaped up to be this. But there, there is no firepower. I mean, yes, the meet and greet, have, having conversations with people, uh, whether we had a stage or venues or not, Scott McKay alone, um, this power is multiplied by, by 10, not by three, because there's three of us. It's by 10 because of what both of these unique human beings bring to the table. Sasha is, you know, everybody knows him as this international humanitarian sledgehammer powerhouse that, that has been trying to wake up humanity for a long time. And Lee Dundas in her own, own right, I call her the, 
the rods of God, because when she brings it, she brings it full throttle. But the three of us together is, is very unique to me. It's magnificent uh, on, on a number of levels and not the least with which Sasha is, is going to help me with my the next level of Ascension Leap. We haven't had a chance to spend as close a time since the very opening of our tour, the Arise Freedom uh, slash Patriot Street Fighter Tour. The, in, in the opening of that, the time I had with Sasha was a huge leap. And, and we never met each other in person. I've only saw him from afar, but, but seeing what he's all about, you know, we, of course, we get this, the, the bullshit that's thrown at us out there in the world, deep state. I'm a, I'm a, uh, a FBI subterfuge agent. I've been called all these kind of things we're called, but, you know, we've had these discussions and, and I'm looking forward to, to getting to know this man on a much deeper level, because to me, he is a gatekeeper for me and to help me understand things about the world at large that, that I have never experienced that he has. So to me, that's the greatest treasure that the, that the tour holds for me truly. And I, and people know I don't pull punches. I don't bullshit people. I don't blow sunshine where it doesn't belong. Um, I just tell it like I see it, even if people don't like it. Um, but for me, that's, that's the greatest part of this. And when he was talking about this unbelievable experience we're having out here. Yeah. People do see me kind of, you know, showing, I, I guess, levels of discomfort when I'm on my feet for, uh, you know, a greater part of the day. And, you know, of course they, they want to empathize with me. I'm like, you know, don't you, I, I tell them, look, you don't understand. I'm not, I'm not out here because I have to do this. I'm here because I get to do this. I actually get to do this every day to meet these wonderful, truly landmark changing experience individuals for me personally every day i mean behind the camera here and and seeing what's going on with an audience uh, online or, or, or you know getting all the mail and emails and all these things that these people do it's something different when you get a chance to actually look into their eyes get a chance to read their soul feed off their soul and take what i need uh to help inspire me to to realize that we didn't lose this country not 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 only do we not lose it we're taking it back and it's coming in the form of these people that have to stand in line for two, three hours just to get a chance to tell me, Scott, I'm in the fight. You taught me to fight. I'm doing this because you taught me to fight. I get to hear this every day. And I get to hear their stories of what fight they're in. Going to a school board meeting, not saying a word, but at least taking the first step to running for uh, city council or getting a group together and discussing how they can push back on the school boards. All this amazing Yay. stuff that these people are doing to me just every day. I'm getting goosebumps telling you right now. I get to see this and I get to get hugs from these people. And I get to draw so much passion and energy for these incredible human beings. And when I have, you know, these big burly beef ranchers in, in Nebraska or, or these, these, these men, serious alpha males, you know, ex-military, retired that are like looking at me with a handshake, a hand on my shoulder, telling me how much this fight that I've taken on means to them and having tears in their eyes. Uh, to me, there's nothing more prized and certainly more prescient from a human experience to be able to see this and feel this. Look, and the fact of the matter is you can't bullshit the, the human emotion side of us. You can't, you can try to fake that stuff. You can put out the words, but you cannot replace that frequency, that that light, that photon of light that comes from these souls can't make that up. And, and that's I want to kill human emotion because that's where it, we have the extraordinary range of emotion, Homo sapiens, and uh, you know that's why they want to kill it because mm -hmm. it is. Yeah. I think what determines where we ha where we go is the range of emotion that we're capable of, and the ultimate capability of the human being to love the other to draw inspiration from the other and you know what i was saying about you on stage wasn't that we feel empathy for you but rather it's such a statement of your commitment in other words you know you're there no matter what you're there you rise above it's the rise freedom tour right and there you are right arising rising above anything that will stop you. And the, the other day I saw you and you were saying, I will not stop. I'm up here. I'm doing this. I will not stop. And it, it's, it's extraordinarily invigorating to be on the receiving end of that power and truth. I'll tell you what, Scott, I'm, I'm, I'm talking to you from the heart here. Yeah, oh, I'm honored by that. Be there in person, I'll tell you, because uh, I can almost feel 
like I'm there, but uh, mm. maybe someday that that will come true. So you you mentioned that we've lost Sasha. He'll come back, hopefully. Yeah, he's somewhere, and he said he had to go halfway up the butte in order to get a signal. He killed. Him. Yeah, yeah. So uh, a good opportunity to ask you. You said something about uh, here he comes. Excellent. Um, you were you were saying that you're learning about uh, your own ascension process through your connection. Here he is uh, with Sasha. How do you uh, envision what that really means to you at this time of planet Earth? Well, you know, I've gone through an, an amazing leap in my world, in my life that that was born out of out of catastrophic situations and um, and, um, and and certain paths of, of research, study, rabbit holes, whatever. Uh, and so so I have a I have a I have a great understanding, you know, the depth of it was something I couldn't have achieved um, otherwise on the path I was on, number one. But number two when Sasha talked about different things and experiences that he's had on this, um, at, I wouldn't, I don't want to say astral realm. I'm looking for a word that can accurately describe it, but an experience that he had once that was you know, quite traumatic, uh, that reflected what he saw in his, in his own unresolved issues and the way he described that, that vision that he had, or this, this experience, it tied in with research that I had done. And I thought that, you know, most people you couldn't throw this at them and they wouldn't just say, this guy's out there. That's the craziest thing I've ever heard. So when I heard him describe this, I thought to myself, nothing is by accident for those of us who are on this enlightenment path. And when he described it, I was like, holy Mary, mother of God, I know exactly what he's talking about. I, but I was able to understand it in a, in a way that I didn't prior to what it actually meant. Um, so these things are, are not just these, these unique anomalies that pop out, out of nowhere. These are puzzle pieces that the universe is snapping into place for me personally on this certain path of enlightenment and spiritual ascension. So that, and also getting to, uh, you know, I, I'm an eye reader. Um, it's just something I've always, it's always been part of me when I talk to people as I'm looking at them, I'm looking at their eyes because sometimes I don't hear a word they say but I'm looking at their eyes because it tells me something about them. So when I'm sitting with Sasha the first time in, uh, in, in uh, North Platte, Nebraska, and we're having this dialogue, uh, to me, um, it was, it was a, 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 an extremely forceful statement just in his in coming from his soul and answering questions that I had. I could see that. And like I said, you can't bullshit people when it comes to that kind of energy or what comes from the eyes. And then a conversation we had on the bus one day, um, I just, I, I became, I became more excited about this, this tour and, and what I'm going to gain from it, uh, than, than, you know, anything else, um, aside, you know, outside of the experience with the people. So, so it's just knowing what it, you know, some of what he knows, uh, a lot of who he knows the experiences that he's been blessed to have even really tough ones. I just want to know, I, I just want to know, you know, what this world, of, uh, of spirituality can offer me. And, and again, I, I've been on this path for a very, very long time. And when I see potentials like this, I'm, I'm just totally excited about it. So to me, he's a, he's a fork and badass. That's about the best way I can describe the guy. He's a fork and badass. What do you say to that, Sasha? Uh, well, it's, it's hard for me to answer something like that because he's far too gracious and far too kind but he's also a lot stronger than me and he carries a gun. So I'm inclined to agree with everything he says. <laughs> no, it's, it's just, a, it's a beautiful thing, Patricia, in, in all seriousness. I mean, talking about a bromance, I, 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 you know, I, my main reason for being here um, is uh, the connection that I got with Scott early, early in the, early in the trip. And I just thought I'm going to learn a lot here. And I have done watching, watching how he's, um, orchestrating his, uh, the influence that he's got, which is very, very substantial, um, actually extraordinarily substantial. And I'm not trying to turn this interview into a mutual backslapping um, gig, but it's important because these are the dynamics that we're living through right now. We have to speak to them. You talk about the new earth and you talk about the natural justice, the work that I do, talk about the Patriot Street Fighters and about the, 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 the reintegrating of the memory, the reinstallation of the memory banks of middle America by the Patriot street fighting meme, just the idea itself 
catalyzes something in the psyche and goes, yes. And because of the grand deceptions of government and of media in recent years, especially the way that Donald Trump was castigated and vilified um, by these uh, Saturnian Luciferian elements, it's easy for normal people, uneducated people to now look at a Patriot Street Fighter meme and go, that feels right to me. And everything issuing out of the federal mouthpiece or the central government mouthpiece or the mainstream media mouthpiece, that's a goddamn fiction, that's a lie. And that's made it very clear. That, that's why I attest to the success of the Patriot Street Fighter, which again, I'll underscore here, is a loving network of people who are standing in consciousness and sovereignty. So it's quite far from the idea of, um, sort of Tomahawk wielding Patriots. That's part of the iconography that Scott is wielding and using, which is very necessary because that's the stuff that triggers in the, in the zeitgeist and reminds us that we are foundationally warriors. Christed beings are warriors by definition. We fight and battle the forces of ill, evil, and darkness. That's what we do. And more than that, we transmute and transcend and overcome all of that. That's the point. And that's why this is a meaningful and substantive tour and a meaningful and substantive narrative that is opening up around the country by extension. Thank you for that. Scott, where do we stand in the Trump phenomenon of uh, the any minute now Trump returns? Have we let go of this? Where do, where do you stand on that? And, and what are the people speaking? I mean, are, are we able to let go of needing Trump to be the savior and to understand that it's our job to do this? Well, I had said early on, uh, whenever the election happened, of course, that that first live stream did what it did in my world. And then when January the uh, 20th came around and the inauguration happened for at least the U.S. corporation, um, I didn't know it was going to go that way. But I knew whatever was going on at that inauguration, I didn't care how that day ended up because I still know that the patriots are in full control and that the other entity that is the the uh, president of the fraudulent or non-existent U.S. corporation is going to continue to play out and play act that they actually have control of this country and the planet, which they don't. Uh, there's an orchestrated operation under the leadership of the true elected president uh, of the United States for America. And uh, they have to clear this playing field in a way that doesn't inflict harm, great harm and damage on humanity. So aside from that, I said in the beginning, look, I don't care. Donald Trump is an ab absolute heroic figure to me. Um, I kissed his star on Hollywood Boulevard two weeks ago to uh, represent that. Um, to me, he is the original Patriot Street Fighter. And um, but I said, look, if Donald Trump doesn't ever come back, we still are going to win. Why? Because we are going to raise we the people in this country. So they understand that they have power. And once they stand up, there doesn't need to be a fight because the, the kinetic energy, the kinetic frequency of energy coming at this power structure, whether they be at these idiotic school board members bringing in critical race theory and non-binary training and all this bullshit, uh, just the force of people in numbers is enough to make them throw down their toys and run home, just like they did in Vail, Arizona. Now. <clears throat> Having said that, again, if the military, the, let's call it the Trump military, does the job to rid this planet of, of this, this satanic order, this satanic larva that's been under the belly of this beast for a long time, it doesn't do anything for humanity. Humanity absolutely needs a great awakening to happen to them so they have this leap in human consciousness, so they have a shot of an ascension process it'll take them from third density to the fourth density in the transition of the earth which is an ascension being moving into that as well if they're not in the upper levels of third the density consciousness they can't survive the transition they will be recycled you can look at the rapture as a terrible thing in revelations which it's not it's a beautiful thing uh, the satanists have inverted that as well so that's more critical than anything is that every human gets a shot at a decision to ascend 
uh, to the next, you know, into the golden age or not. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, I never talk about timelines. I never talk about happenings. But what do I believe about Donald Trump? I believe he's still the man. I believe he's still kicking asses behind the curtain. And uh, I believe that they are doing exactly what they need to do in the sequence necessary to return the power back to the people. And do I believe he's going to be at the helm? I sure do. I absolutely do. Um, is it necessary to me if he's not? No, because the alliance powers will orchestrate uh, the return of this power to the people in whatever fashion they deem. I just know enough in a long intel briefing that I had last week for six and a half hours that we have a lot to be forking excited about in a huge way. So um, I'm as excited now and I've never ever once backed up one millimeter that we're going to win this thing and that Trump has always known exactly what he's doing. The military knows exactly what they're doing and they're going to draw this to the ultimate outcome. Well, hallelujah to that, because I'm a Trump supporter from way back, but I have questioned one thing that just it's here, and that is why does he perpetually uh, propose and uh, advise people to take the jab? I can't get my head around this. I'd love to know either of you have an opinion about that, because a lot of people are asking me that question, and I keep putting it out there. It's just it doesn't, it's not resonant, it's not consonant with the man who stood up there and one of the, when I first fell in love with Trump, it was there are other solutions. We're going to exhaust every other solution. We're looking for cures. We're looking for treatments. And now get your shot, get your shot, get your jab. It's becoming very annoying. And uh, I, I even questioned, is that really him speaking? I'd love to have, saying you say you have major intel. What's your take on that? I had heard an answer to that. And I've wanted an answer too, because I'm confused. Uh, or I shouldn't say I'm confused. I'm, I'm, I'm curious because what... Whatever his reason is, I have no second guessing on why he's doing it. I know it's for the benefit of humanity, for the operation. Uh, when I did get an answer, and I wanted to be able to give it to people because they can't, if they don't have that internal feeling that I have about the man, then it's not enough for them. So I did hear it put in a way that made sense to me, which I couldn't even articulate it or re even reiterate it because it's been weeks and I had so many things that come at me. But I'll say that it, as I understood, it has something to do with the ability to then prosecute the culprits for crime. No, oh, funny that he would freeze up at that moment, right? Are you frozen too, Sasha? Oh my goodness, I'm the only unfrozen one. All right, we'll wait for him to come back because I want to be sure to get Scott to finish that. See, there my you back. Are. I heard my you, back. You froze uh, right in the middle of explaining what your theory was well it just i it just it had something to do as i was explaining to me in the ability to prosecute these people for crimes against humanity in the way this thing was classified and if he did uh, was a proponent of people having the choice to take the shot or whatever it i, I can't articulate it because i can't remember uh but it made sense to me i was like oh okay so that's why that makes sense i just can't remember it but i have absolutely full confidence that there's a very, very good reason for that. Now, if I want to be harsh, I would say, well, you know what? At this point in time, all these people who are in a position of dark energy or lower frequency energy or lower le levels of ascension, well, we all have a choice to make. Yeah. We all have a choice to make. And if that people decide they want to choose the dark side, the side of fear, I'm going to take this, even though I can see things around me that make no sense and I'm going to continue down this path, guess what? At the end of the day, we all have free will. We, we will determine whether we're going to ascend or not by our choices. What do you have to say to that, Sasha? Well, I think that's entirely right. I mean, I'm also pretty mercenary, but I believe I'm very circumspect as well. Uh, at this time, I've been saying it really since the beginning of this year, that this is the time for triage. This is the time to stop uh, walking to the back of the line to try and retrieve the irretrievables or redeem the irredeemables. And that's not to say I'm, I'm throwing my brothers and sisters under a bus, but I am saying that they, uh, with their continued foot dragging and playing into the false light by, you know, playing into the fiction, wanting to be masked, wanting to have vaccinations, wanting to have the government and the bureaucrats intercede in sovereign choices. All of that is Luciferianism. It's false light idolatry and it's time out. We at the front of the line have got to triage, which is to cut off 
the dead wood and, and, and move on or risk uh, very serious consequences. So if, if that was Trump's play, I don't pretend to understand how he plays fifth dimensional Babylonian chess, um, which is certainly what's being played, to be clear about that. Um, I, don't, I don't pretend to second guess the man. I think I'm a lot cleverer than him. I've definitely got a higher IQ. I'm definitely more creative, but he is very brilliant in a very brutish way that would definitely beat the socks off me in so many areas. And I recognize that in him. And if, if he's saying, whoever you are, you've already made your decision. So the sooner you fuck off, the, excuse me, the sooner you peel off, the better. The sooner you get your injections and triage and move into the bifurcation, the better, because that means that humanity can move ever more quickly into its emancipation. There's a very good argument for that, Patricia, because we are being held back by the fuzzy logic, by the gray area. It, mm -hmm. That's what's actually creating the sludge and the fog of war. And we, re, we need clarity now. 2021 is all about absolute clarity. So what you're saying then is that he's invoke, evoking people to go ahead and take it so we can clear away the resigned individuals from those who are in their sovereignty? Yes, I think there's an argu argument for that. That's part of the play, I think. I don't think it's a matter of conscience. I think that it's, a, it's, a, it's about war strategy. When you realize that more people are going to be harmed by the longer we extend the fog of war versus right now calling out all of the confused psycho babblers and getting them to triage themselves, that might be how we release humanity from the dragnet sooner rather than later. He would have a brain that understood that stratagem. I don't. What do you say to that? Uh, I second it at 100% because at the end of the day, we all have known this all of our existence, all of our lives, there are going to be spiritual casualties, right? There's just going to be just the fact that, you know, you look at outwitting the devil and uh, Hill talks about not winning the devil as he's interviewing the devil or forcing a confession from the devil on how he destroys human potential. How do you get 98% of the people? And you must be very busy. And he replies from the devil, not busy at all. I got legions of people that do my bidding for me. Like who? Like the clergy, like parents, like the religious order, like the, uh, the school system, like the education system, like government, all these institutions that we task uh, to unleash human potential, does everything to limit it by design. So when you look at the, the mass control that the machine has built, the control mechanism, this machine that was built to engineer exactly that, to get all of humanity, and, 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 and which is 98%, yet we can actually redeem, you know, out of 7.2 billion, we might be able to redeem billions of people. That's a huge win given what's been against us. So if we know you know, I don't believe in hell, heaven, hell, the way that the, the, the religious order has per portrayed that. I believe heaven or hell is exactly where you stand dependent on, you know, your own ascension processes. But if all these people are going to be eliminated from the playing field anyways, uh, I think that they just, we have to come to grips with the fact you're not going to save everybody. We have free will. It's their choices. Everybody in the world is walking around with a global encyclopedia. They have the choice to go do their own research, to try to figure things out, and they make the choice not to. I got family members that fit into that category. I have family members that have gotten the jab. What do you say about that? The Patriot Street Fighter has family members that has gone gotten the jab. Are you forking kidding me? I mean, it is what it is. It, you know, yeah, there's I got family members too, and it's it's just beyond my comprehension i'm i'm you know speechless that they won't even they're not even willing to listen to the information that's the part that that fries me you can still make your decision to do what you're going to do but at least be willing knowing that more and more people are dying on the spot dying weeks later tremors the whole bit at least pay attention to it i, I just i'll never understand it other than to say that the zombie apocalypse has already begun and they're zombified well it it certainly, I think you'll find it's going to be kicking off in a big way. Don't forget that from what we understand, there's a six to eight month incubation period, uh, more or less. And again, just to quickly underscore again, the Trump 
um, chess move. It may be that him calling for people to get the vaccine is going to expose far sooner rather than later the, the casualties and the deaths directly related to the vaccine rather than a slow hand of two to three years rollout, which would cause that much more um, collateral damage to, to humanity and um, intercede that much more into the genetic um, makeup of humanity. Because the longer that play is, the more uh, widespread that dragnet goes over the human uh, gene expression. So to try and say, okay, let's rush the gate, force people into it, we can see the problem and we can ring fence it and deal with it. I think that's probably uh, the strategy. But you know what, at the end of the day, this is not about masking and it's not about injections. It's not about the social distancing. It's about um, a spiritual determination. I think uh, Scott alluded to this earlier about those who choose to remain in, in a frequency bandwidth, which is comfortable uh, to them now, which is the th a third density and, and, and the lower elemental um, uh, uh, realms, or uh, do we want to surf the ascension wave, which is here? Uh, oh, don't stop now. Really? I'm just on the, all the get, way you finish stuff. Gets to no. that one point we have to hear. Yeah, I'm God, we'll if... wait for him. I think you can hear us. So just remember you, you, you froze when you were saying to ride that ascension wave and ah <laughs> he, he disappeared he'll probably come back in yeah i um, mean it's just so exhilarating isn't it it's just so exhilarating knowing that we are here at, you know in my work 25 30 years i've been talking about the ascension and um to know that we are finally recognizing it really immersed in it feeling it feeling this dimensional shift i mean i'm mm -hmm. feeling time Many people are feeling time shifting, mutating, just collapsing. And I'm having all kinds of experiences where I'm in another moment and I'm back and it ain't no deja vu, right? It's yeah. just like, okay, so this is one of the aspects of the fourth dimension is where time just disappears. And here we are and let's clear. I personally, I'm more than excited to clear through the fourth dimension, get on with it to the higher dimensions. Cause for me, the fourth is a clearing station. How do you feel about that, Scott? Yeah, I, mean, I think so, too. I think, obviously, you have the sensation of eternal bliss, but even experiencing what that may feel like, I think it might have been in the law of one. Uh, they talked about it as being like a, an, an ongoing, never-ending, orgasmic state. Yet there's more densities to, to elevate, too. Like, you're thinking, are you kidding me? How can it get much better? But that's really what, you know, it's, it's got to be a... Um, vibrational thing i'm guessing but to me i, I just I, i'm having truly the, the most magnificent time of my life that i could have ever imagined going through this process because uh, knowing it's happening understanding it seeing the transformation on many levels of humanity that i see that's in front of me uh people actually care about each other uh, in ways that i haven't seen in my lifetime maybe since i was a kid growing up in a small town where the community actually had self an interest in each other but on top of that, this shift in the chessboard, the chess game being played globally, like I haven't seen it for the decades that I've paid attention, seeing moves being made like, wow, that's, that's never transpired, like this really magnificent change happening on the planet. Now, if you're just going through your life day to day, going home to work, work to home, home to work, working for the weekend, checking out and burying yourself with activities just to try to cover up the displeasure of life in general, uh, which I believe many, many, many people do, especially if we are the sentient beings that we are, and by design should have magnificent experiences every single moment we're awake or alive, period, and it's not happening. Uh, people are just missing. They're not seeing this transformation taking place in the world. And, and I can tell you, we, we manifest these things based on this, by our consciousness, by the thoughts that we have every day. It's like, you know how it is, Patty. Somebody people talking about uh, negative things and how the world sucks and every day is, you know, bad. And, you know, my neighbor, this are just constantly talking about shitty stuff. What is their whole life all about? Exactly that. They manifest that. If you have sure. an outlook like you and I have, we know there's beauty beyond, you know, beyond the, the our sight and our minds that we know is out there. We just have to figure out how to uh, absorb into that space, that realm, 
Um, we're looking for it. We're looking for the light every day. And we find the light every day. People look for darkness every day. They find darkness in this world every day. You know, so we just, how, why we were people that ended up on this plane of consciousness or thinking or chose this, I have no idea. I just know I try to spread this information, offer it to the world, hoping humans will, will, uh, will grab onto it and at least have some type of hope that there is something that should make them happy and smile every day and want to be alive and breathe and meet new people. Um, that's just kind of my job, my mission. It's like, you know, for me, the rest of my life, I can't see being anything other than a race to save as many humans as possible before a time comes when we can't save anymore, you know, in the spiritual realm. That's to me, is a, a, like I said before, when people, you know, want to empathize with me when I'm having some discomfort, I'm like, don't feel sorry for me. I get to do this every day. I don't have, you know, I get to do it. Can you imagine being me? <laughs> How amazing that is. And to me, it's just, it's the way I wake up every day. It's why, I, you know, do this stuff every single day. And it's the greatest joy of my entire life. It's nothing uh, su supersedes what's happening here and the, and the gift I've been given to, um, you know, have the opportunity to speak to people and, uh, you know, hopefully have, have something that has value in their world and their life and then have them tell me that it does. Um, um, I don't know if I deserve it. I just know, um, you know you deserve I'm, honored. It. I'm honored by all of it yeah, every day. I hear you. I I've spent most of my life in service as well. And, you know, one of the, uh, right now I'm, I'm marooned on this paradise island, the Azores. And mm. we can't get off the island unless we can't get back on the island without the swab, which I will not do. So I'm, you know, marooned in paradise. And my contact is not so much with people like you're, you're fortunate to have, but through the internet, which is okay for now. Mm. But um, my message to people is, you know, pay attention to nature. If you want to feel the beauty of life, you don't have to go far. Just look at a blade of grass. I mean, I, I, the other day I was sitting at my desk and there's a butterfly caught in a, in a spider's nest. I was, I was actually in the middle of an interview. I had to interrupt the interview to go save the spider. And then I was guilt tripping myself about, am I interfering with the natural process that the, even the spider has to eat? But I just couldn't stand to see this beautiful creature uh, be consumed mm -hmm. that way. And I thought, how blessed am I? not only to be in a, in a position to see the, this happening, but to be looking, to be paying attention. Because when you are paying attention to nature and the perfection of creation all around you, there's no way you can be depressed. There's no way you can be looking for the darkness, in my humble opinion. It's true. It's, it's, it's just amazing to me that um, we're now discovering these things. You know, we're discovering just looking at green grass, looking at trees and just thinking, how beautiful is this planet we're on and how lucky are we? How do we walk through every day? Like when you go to a different part of the world, I'm in Montana now, you know, the, um, the, uh, the mountains that I'm looking at, you know, it's different than the landscape that I've seen where I'm at, you know, for a period of time. And you stop and you think how breathtaking this ascension being is. And, uh, you know, it's just, it's just, a, it's a, it's a magnificent choice we get to make. And it's a magnificent vision or view uh, whenever we understand this and make that choice to see the, 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 the beauty in all of it. And to me, you know, it sounds like I'm, I'm, a, I'm a corny artist trying to describe a picture like, what a weirdo. <laughs> that might be how I once thought, right? That's how I might have once thought, but I've transcended that to where I can see things like an, like an artist may describe it, you know, it's, it's truly magnificent. But I think um, that that is part of our, our, when people describe what is ascension, it's all of a sudden being able to notice the design of the beehive and the sacred geometry in that. And mm -hmm. in my life, I've been to the crop circles 20 years in a row until this last year, um, just questioning it, just finding the magic and looking at it, being in it and saying, well, something's doing this, what is it? And it's always sacred geometry, and it just, we keep putting layers on layers and layers of our awakening consciousness of noticing all these synchronicities and the synergy of life. And, you know, when I hear people saying, I'm done here, I want to leave this planet, I, I just, it blows me away because look at this planet. Mm -hmm. It's paradise. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you're not happy with where you are in your location, move, 
get to the green, get to the beauty. And uh, fortunately, a lot of people are doing that. Yeah, it, um, Abraham Lincoln said it best. He said, a man is about as happy as he chooses to be. And that all comes down to the decisions you make. Um, I hate to jump because I'm having a great conversation with you, but I got a, a, a call scheduled that's coming up in a couple of minutes and I got to get in place for this thing. Um, but what a, what a great pleasure to do this with you. It's like I, I, I'm starving to get some activity uh, on, on, uh, on shows and channels because I'm out here in the road. Uh, I've, I've had so little time to even keep my own channel alive. But so, in fact, whenever you get this thing posted, uh, uploaded, give, if you can give me the link to it, I'll get it up as well. Cause I know the audience is going to want to see you and, 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 you know, see, yep. see our conversation today. I, they're, they're starving for some Sasha stone. <laughs> so, uh, let's, let's yeah. get that, get, we'll send them over to your channel. Coming back on when you have a little more time. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So this is perfect because today, and this was meant to happen, uh, because today I had to come to a friend's house here to get a very high speed connection to actually have, uh, I had a zoom earlier and then to have this one too. And then I got to do that uh, tonight at, uh, at, uh, seven Eastern is going to be what I think is going to be an epic, uh, show because I got two to three hours with some, some individuals that are going to lay out a 250 year history of the implementation of communism on the planet. And these people who are going to be doing this with me, I've had exposure to them. And I'll tell you what, I don't know who they are. I have an idea, but the information that they've given me in a six and a half hour Intel briefing is mind blowing beyond mind blowing about what's really happening behind the scenes yeah. uh, in this world as we, as we're taken back, not just the, the country, but the world and humanity from the satanic order. So anyways, I, I, uh, was, had this had this opportunity and it was supposed to happen today so i'm grateful for your time and get a chance before to see you right before you go can you give us a link to where that program will be yeah it's going to be streamed on my rumble channel so that's psfrumble.com uh my youtube channels are down again we put up 19 and 20 i think a day or two ago and within the day they take had taken them down before we even got a chance to live stream on them so the war continues with youtube um so so american media periscope while i'm on the road is sending me a link or my guests and then they broadcast onto my available channels and 21 other platforms to get you know some exposure while i'm out right, here so, so listen everybody it. it's psfrumble.com try to catch it and oh well this will be after that but i'll they, they can still go back and probably pick it up and, yes. Um, oh, yeah, that's true. And, um, uh, thank I will, you. I'm honored and delighted to meet you at last. And I really hope to have you back on where we can really dig deeper and, and explore each other's outlook, wisdom, and love. Absolutely. I'm in 100%. Wonderful. All right, everybody. You've been listening to my, well, we lost the wonderful Sasha, but we've been together with Sasha and Scott McKay on Beyond the Matrix, the program that invites you, it implores you to think outside the box of conformity. Thank you. I will see you soon, Patriot Warrior, Light Warrior, Scott McCain. Love you. Have a great day. Bye, honey.